Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We have a new Jupiter window available to us, and so I've decided to cook up a new Jupiter probe, but with a somewhat different launcher. We have got the Vulcane now, and I've decided that we should have a smaller launcher than the full Arcturus launcher that can launch off of ELA-5 with its 460 ton limit. And so we have the core plus boosters, just two of them, not six of them. So. The core is actually slightly modified. Uh, the normal length of these tanks is 7.6 meters. They are 7.3 because that's still tooled. And so it gives us a sort of thrust weight ratio benefit. I, I mean, the pad, it's not pushing the pad limit at all. So we could make them their full size, but I wanted the thrust weight ratio to be a little bit better, especially since these boosters are technically a little bit smaller than the ones on the full Arcturus. There's actually an extra tank on the Arcturus ones, which are the tank that we use to extend the core on the Denib rocket when we have boosters on the Denib rocket. So they are actually the tall sized tanks uh, that we pair up with the Viking engines. And this time we don't have that top tank, so these will burn out quicker and lower in the atmosphere, so I don't want the Vulcane to have such a low thrust to weight ratio. Anyway, uh, we do have fairly good Delta V out of the core plus boosters. Uh, we'll probably uh, finish orbit with the upper stage and then go on to Jupiter. We we're expecting that the Delta V required is, say, 6,400. So most of that stage, I mean, all of that stage plus most of that stage, really, because this is going to be completing orbit. And that will leave us about 2,500 to capture around Jupiter and manage some flybys. We need to fly by at least two of the moons of Jupiter. And we'll just do the trivial science. That's what we've got loaded. I haven't changed the probe at all because it worked. Uh, we'll think about RG RTGs later. But on the previous one, we had tech level 4. Now we have tech level 5. So they're lighter, cheaper, and give even more power. So I think we'll just run with it. And hopefully that'll work out for us. So that is our new revamped Joule probe, or Jupiter probe, uh, Joule 2 totally confusing myself with this but we do need to work on the propellant GSE for this because now we've got all this hydrolox that we didn't have before so I am going to upgrade ELA-5 and that will take 29,000 but you know this is a nice launcher and it'll be more capable than the old Deneb launcher so we might as well. Meanwhile of course our uh, uncrewed lunar mission the one that's going to get into orbit around the moon and come back without any crew to test that that's okay is under construction as well. We are researching space planes era material science, though we now have a lot of extra science. Maybe just for the engineer efficiency we should just keep going with those. I don't want to do any more avionics cores. <laughs> oh, we've had too many avionics cores. Uh, somebody had asked why I didn't just make the um, Vulcane 2 a configuration, you know, an upgrade to the Vulcane 1, and that's just because I haven't looked at how to do that yet, basically. I mean, I have configured many parts for Realism Overhaul. I haven't done uh, much about RP1, so I have to figure out how they actually do that in RP1, and I have not done that, so... Uh, that's all. Eventually I'll do that. Before I release uh, whatever pack of things that that I have done to this as something that other people can use, I'll try and make sure I do that. So, But there are other fixes that need to be done as well. I mean, we were doing space planes. <laughs> I, was, I was very interested in doing space planes. There's not much that we're supposed to do with it. They haven't added the space plane... Uh, until they uh, add the space plane development program, I think we should lay off. And I do want the Maya space plane to work properly too. So, yeah. I want the space plane development program and we'll use it to also help out with our space station development program, which they also haven't added yet. So, but we'll, uh, I, if they don't add that stuff by the time I finish with the landing on the moon stuff, the crew landing on the moon, then I'll try and cook up some uh, cheapy program that will let me do those missions just so that we can do these things that they have here for that and Earth Space Station. And then after that, I'm going to have to find some interesting stuff to do with Mars and such. 
Okay, now ELA-5 is happy with this rocket, and we will build one. Well, we have funds now. Maybe I should hire some more engineers. We're using all we can at ELA-6, so we've got 200 applicants. I'll use those to build our um, Jupiter probe. Uh, we'll need more. How are we doing? 431 daily. February 17th we have to, have to get it done by. Oh, alright, I'll hire some more. We've got to take some from ELA-6 though. Okay, so that'll be done by January. This will be done by September. Okay, well before the space plane era, material science comes in, I should queue something up. I don't want to hire more engineers, so we'll just uh, get that engineer efficiency upgrade. I don't know if that really, really helps that much. 100 MLI layers, though. And we get composite fairings, too. Okay, we'll get that. And just for the heck of it, I'll get the Mark II cockpit. And these parts, maybe. Uh, you know what? I, I, I want the science lab more. We'll, we'll get the science lab. Okay. You'll probably have to be trained especially for the science lab. How is training going anyway? She's working on Apollo. But right now she's got to retire on March, uh, March 21st, so that's tight. Sebastian's already got Apollo and landing. How much for another Kerbal? 5,000 just to hire them. But then they cost a lot afterwards. Kefta Halili, huh? Vincent Orion. I'm mainly looking at pilots. They seem to train faster for these things. Milka. Milka Radulovic. But yeah, I, I don't want her scientists, so those three are out. So it's Tefta, Vincent, maybe Daniel Cramp. <laughs> Doesn't sound like he would have a good time in the cockpits. They're really tight. Now we will hire Milka. Probably not great for our funding. Oh, suddenly we have a thousand per day. What happened just now? <laughs> hmm. Oh, well, we aren't constructing Lunar Mission 5 anymore. Oh, right. Um, uh, sorry, not 5, V. <laughs> that is V. That's V for Volcane. Um, we should construct another one so that the crew can go on it next time. Okay. We'll build one. And let's get Milka being trained up in... Oops. In that. In Apollo. And Sebastian can start out with the mission training, I suppose. That's going to take a while, too. 148 days. Well, Nancy uh, now has 281 more days with us. We barely had enough money to roll that out. <laughs> okay, well, at least we're net positive after the rollout. Okay, well, let's time warp to morning, and then we'll launch and see if this thing can bring our crew to the moon and bring them back safely. Okay, folks, here we go with a test of the Arcturus launcher and the Mark 1-3 spacecraft to the moon. And we are planning to try to get this uncrewed into lunar orbit and then bring it back. So, SAS on, throttle up, ignition. Well, it looks like all of them. And go. It once again changed sound on me right about here. Interesting. And we are past the clouds. past the speed of sound. Well, everything worked fine with the boosters. And off they go. Just a quiet volcano now. And launch escape system. 
Let me just toggle the fuel cells for safety's sake. I think they're running fine, but... Our current power draw is because of the core down here. Okay, whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, I didn't want it up in orbit. Shoot. Wanted to shut it off before then. Oh well. I was managing the inclination, so... I was trying to get the inclination minimal and... Let that go a little bit. That'll be fine. We, I want to do a mid-course correction to lift it up a little bit, but that'll be fine. We're not putting anything into a free return trajectory in this case. We just won't do that. I waited too long. Um, we wait in orbit, actually. That will be interesting, anyway. Okay, settling the fuel down. And ignition. We have three engines. Okay, and cut. All right. A little bit of RCS. Though probably we don't need to do that. The mid-course adjustment will probably be helped by that being a little bit loose. What we really want is it to end up in the same inclination as the tug. Though we're not planning to use the tug with this, of course. But just make sure all the missions end up really close to that. And that's within a degree, so that'll be fine. Okay, then it's safe. Alright. Well, we'll have the stage tag along just to, once again, gauge the boil off and verify that the electric charge with the fuel cells can charge both the spacecraft and the stage just in case. So we start off with 516 here. To avoid messing up the 516 reading, I will just use RCS. Well, it would still alter the delta V somewhat, but as much as actually using the engines to do the burn. That looks pretty good. Been one degree, 68 kilometer. Of course, different phase than the tug, so that would be a problem, but. Okay, for now, 518 meters per second in the stage. Well, it says 519 now. So, how much will we have when we get there? Essentially the same. We might have lost one meter per second. Okay, well, at this point we will separate the stage and we will continue with just the service module to do the rest because that's what we're supposed to do. So, separation. Okay, and RCS forward. But this stage can be deorbited into the moon. And ignition. Very decisively. All right, so that'll be disposed of. Check comms. Well, we should probably capture earlier rather than later. We will use the hypergolic system and the and the hydrolock system in parallel to get the full 2,100 we see there. Okay, selling fuel down and ignition. We have a, well, almost, there we go. We have a capture now. Well, there's something flying by there. Associated with us, of course. Probably the stage smacking into the surface. Okay, that'll be good enough for now. Tight enough orbit for sure. Okay, and we just want to get back. What is that alarm for? Huh, anyway. Yep, that's the tug up there. Green line. And when we come back home, it should be green line too. So we have the relay. That that tug is actually relaying us. Which is nice of it. Okay, well, I don't know exactly what altitude I want. I'll set it to 60. It's usually safe.
just out of curiosity, how much do we have just in the hypergolic system right now? 519. So just on that, we won't be able to come back. I might want to increase the size of it and decrease the size of the Hydrolox one just so that, and maybe we won't use it initially so that we can guarantee that it has enough to come back. This seems like a better plan. I think we could hang out for a substantial amount of time without the boil off really affecting us much. Okay, ignition. Oh, that's the end of the hydro locks. And we'll touch that up a little bit. Hmm, hold on. Actually, we have forward thrusters here. Are they not getting the fuel? This is... I mean, I think I... Maybe the heat shield doesn't... Oh, enable cross feed. Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, I'm never going to hit the exact... Oh, okay, 60. There we go. All right. Good times. Off we go. Back home. 447 meters per second for our other operations around the moon. As necessary. It is good of the engine to not actually consume all the fuel, considering we need some for the fuel cell. Uh, did we leave enough though? I guess we're gonna find out. Seems like it. Seems like the residuals that we can't use for the engine will be enough to power the fuel cell. But, you know. Might want to be cautious about that. There is still the pods amount. There is this Hydrolox in the pod for the fuel cell that we put in there. It's starting to use that right now. But actually it has about the same amount down here too. Or I think that's not being used. It's uh, actually boiled off a little bit, maybe. Okay, approaching Earth. Let me pre-arm the chutes. Now the pod itself, it's RCS thrusters, not including the ones at the top, uses MT, MMH and NTO. The upper thrusters are just for docking and will not be functional for re-entry because their uh, propellant is down here actually, the Mon 3. The oxidizer is down there. They would share the same fuel but they won't have the oxidizer. Okay. Separation time. Right. Let's clear that. All right. So descent mode, and we'll go with 30. That seemed relatively safe. We've oversized the heat shield just a little bit more. No guarantees, though. Our entry angle will be different because we're actually coming back from the moon this time instead of from just a high orbit. So maybe I'll keep that up just in case. Ion sensing altitude we can't do without crew, so it's fine. This one suggestion was to turn off the pitch and I'll do that. Okay, right about now we'll be fine. Off. I'm prepping a 180 degree roll. Oh, it's trying to overheat again. Maybe I should do manual control. Uh, I'm gonna reduce the offset. I don't know how much lifting re-entry we can do with this thing. Alright, let's try and roll around. Again. I don't know. Well, it seems safer this way. Heads down. Oh, wait, maybe 23, 24 degrees? 26? I just want to get to below orbital speed here, and then we'll turn back around. That seems fine. Let's go back to G-force mitigation if we can. 
Doesn't seem to want to, though. Let me manually roll it. That was me turning it, actually. Smart ASS was not happy anymore. It's not even trying. <laughs> it's not going to zero roll. I don't know, this whole uh, overheat business is still making me unhappy. We have got the heat shield a little bit bigger. We can make it even bigger, but... It's already poking out. They really didn't need to make the handlebars, like, having a problem with this. But I get the strange feeling that they did. Even back from the moon, we didn't use much of the ablator. I mean, we used some, but not a huge amount of the ablator. 150 units of 860, so less than a quarter. Just wish it would protect us better. Okay, parachutes are out. Sort of nominal speeds. And where are we? I mean, I didn't target any particular location. It's, uh, well, if you don't target any particular location, you will probably end up smack in the middle of the Pacific somewhere in the doldrums, really far away from any particular land, which is where we are. So, yeah. Okay. Recover. Normal recovery. Didn't even give me an option for the recover to VAB, which is interesting. Alright, we got some science out of it, even though I didn't try to. Recovery of vessel returned from orbit around the moon, after all, yes. And 12,000 funds back, which we sorely need. 51.6%. Alright, but the next thing will be that Jupiter probe, so let us get to that. Okay, well, I don't know how long rollout's gonna take see 21st oh that's the 17th though i didn't expect it to take three weeks so let's get some more staff over let's get back down to a thousand over here there that's better still gonna cost a lot okay so we're ready to launch now now we've got all our engineers at ela6 but that would mean nobody's there for the cleanup on the LA-5, so let's put 200 back. Okay, it is time for our Jupiter probe to launch. SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. All looks good, and go! First launch of the Arcturus Light rocket. I think I might have accidentally left the original core on here from the Arturus. We could probably use the smaller core, the 460 ton core instead. Would be quicker. Okay, booster set. Cannot separate fairings yet. Okay, fairing separation. Mostly looking good. Okay, that was pretty much what I wanted. Let's finish orbit with this stage. Okay, a little bit lopsided, but that's fine. We got what we wanted out of that. And the Vulcan engine lasted the whole time. And let's plot for Jupiter. Okay, in 19 minutes, a 6,014 meter per second burn. And that's pretty close. So it's long transit time, it's three years. And ignition. They both lit. I did slightly tilt the 3.6 kN thrusters this time. I hope that'll help. Okay, next. How are we doing? Well, it's using some pitch, but it's not bad. Okay, 
Let's try that for now. We do have an encounter. And bring that in a bit. We really, really want to be in the plane with the rest of the with the moons, so this is probably not great. And the course correction. Let's just use IO for reference. It's not bad. And that's well, it's better than what we've got, and it's only 16.5 uh, meters per second, so that will be our mid-course correction after 276 days. We are recharging. Um, I don't want to mess with it. We'll just leave it like it is. It's got tracking solar panels, and they seem to be tracking 0% wear. And by the time we do the mid-course correction, uh, of course, we'll need to point at the sun a little bit more definitively at that point but it should be fine for now. I'll actually, just in case, because, you know, there's an expensive probe and everything, I'll uh, have a battery warning, just in case. Yeah. Okay. So that is active, and we've got the uh, maneuver there. That's it for this window. I can't get another probe together in time. So, with that heading out, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.